a neat little tucked away, not too well known state park in South Arkansas near El Dorado is Morro Bay. It's where Morro Bayou joins the Washita River. And a really neat way to explore this area is either by canoe or kayak. So let's do it. We ventured out with the group of day campers as the park interpreter filled us in on a little bit of the history of this area. Back in 1804, when Hunter and Dunbar came up the river, you know, doing their exploring, think about the size the trees must have been at that time. That was all virgin timber then. It had never been logged out or cut or anything like that, so the trees were much bigger back then than they are now. You'll see an occasional big tree now, but nothing compared to what they had back then. As they came down the river, they recorded all different settlements they might have seen with white men. They recorded numbers of Native Americans they saw, Native American villages, whether they friendly or unfriendly. They recorded what kind of land was up and down the river. You guys turn around and look behind you now. Everybody turn around and look behind you. Notice how wide and open and deep looking the water looks here. And then you turn around and you look in front of you and it's a totally different environment. It's got a lot of trees, got a lot of stumps, got a lot of the cypress knees and stuff like that. There's a big difference in the environment right here and this is kind of a man-made difference. The difference is this behind us has been cleaned out to create a port area. Back when you go back and you study the history of the Washita River, before there was any roads built in this area, the river was the highway. Everything was shipped up and down the river. Everything came up and down the river on a steamboat. So there was only certain times during the year, they didn't have locks and downs back then, so there's only certain times a year that you could bring those big steamboats up and down the river. A lot of people don't realize it, but back in those days, in eight, around 1861, Camden was almost as big as Little Rock. It was a booming area at that time. And the reason being, everything came up the river. It came from New Orleans up through Monroe and up to Camden. Everything was unloaded off the steamboats in Camden. Everything was dispersed over this part of the state from Camden. Then the river boats would turn around, they'd head back down the river. As they was going back down the river, they'd pull into the warehouses like we had here and like Pigeon Hill had. They would load these bales of cotton in this corner and would load people that was wanting to go south and they would go back down the river. And when you go and you look at Camden now and you think about it being, you know, a grow, growing, booming city back in those days like that, it's kind of hard to imagine now. Now look at this tree right here in front of me. Notice how you can see all the way through it. Notice how it's a big, open, hollow tree. Typically when the cypress tree gets old, they tend to want to die from the top down like that. So that's one of the reasons they hollow out like they do. Plus they're down, they're down in water. Since they grow so close to the water, the cypress wood is a little bit different type wood and it tends to handle the weather quite well. So cypress wood is used for a lot of siding on houses and buildings and barns and things like that. The fishing opportunities here at Morro Bay State Park are excellent with several species being quite abundant. This is also a good area to set trot lines, good area to set yo-yos and things like that. You've got a variety of good sports type fish back here. You've got a variety of bass, you've got catfish, you've got crappie, you've got brim. You've got a lot of other fish back here like some gars and carps and things like that that's not necessarily considered what we call good fish. Birds and other wildlife are also quite prevalent. lot of variety of turtles along the logs and the limbs and stuff in here. Since the sun's not out though, they're not up on top of the logs sunning like they normally are. They're reptiles, so the only way they can warm their bodies is to get out and absorb the heat from the rocks and logs and stuff like that that they rest on and absorb that heat through their back. So normally you come down here you'll see a variety of turtles on the logs. Well, 
Well, Chris, Anna, what do you think of the kayaking experience out here and all the activities that uh, y'all been doing here? Well, I really like this day camp. I've been coming here since I was seven, six or seven, and I'm a kayaker. So this is a real nice place to kayak, I think. And, well, there's all the stumps and all. That's a bad thing, though. <laughs> but I've never seen anybody flip out here, and all the instructors and all do very good. They make sure that we know what to do so we won't flip and give us a nice little to real nice tour to place back here. It's a real pretty place and we've seen many nice things. What's the, is the most striking uh, part about the, uh, the uh, you know the scenery here that you think? Is it the cypress trees or uh, uh, what is it that you like? Well, I like going up and seeing the hollow cypress trees. It's a real cool place and well where my poppy lives, used to live, they have cypress trees too and they are so cool and there's lots of nice, nice things to see in there like the rotted wood. It's just something you don't see every day. That's true, that's true. And I think it's real cool because it's old and who knows how many years it's been here. You're absolutely right. You're looking at something that's a piece of history and then something that probably doesn't get noticed a lot. Well have you caught any fish out here? Yes. Yeah. We've went all the way to the Lock and Dam way back there and we've caught a good size catfish and a real like it looked like a record size brim but <laughs> first cast but after that you usually don't catch anything else. And we've caught a lot of catfish out here. We've set up a trot line and we've caught four catfish on the trot line. And we do something called noodle fishing where we buy some noodles and we put them on a pipe and throw it out and wait for a fish to bite it and chase it down. Cool. We've caught one very nice sized catfish on that. Huh. Well, it sounds like y'all have really had a, a great time out here. We have. <laughs> if I've got to choose, I'd put Choose Moro Bay as one of my favorite places. It's not too far away and it's a pretty place to come. I think the state park uh, needs to have you as their spokesperson. <laughs> Well, we've had fun over the past two days we've been here. Today's our last day, and we're just out here exploring wildlife, I guess you could say. Yeah. It's pretty neat doing it uh, this way, isn't it? Oh, yeah. Never done it before. Really? Yep. That's, that's the way to do it. Uh, yeah. You kind of can sneak up on all the uh, yeah. on the birds, the great blue herons and yeah. egrets. Turtles. and yeah. Turtles, yeah, on the logs. Yeah. And uh, Sasquatch out here too, right? Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah. Definitely Sasquatch. <laughs> yes, definitely. Uh, I thought so. The Ozark Mountain Bicycle Trail follows a series of forest service roads and county roads deep in the Ozark National Forest in the Richland Creek Wilderness Area. You'll pass by streams, waterfalls, rock formations, and all sorts of various scenic qualities. This bicycle route is actually Old Forest Service Road 1205, which goes up to the Richland Creek Campground area. Located one mile east of Ben-Hur off Highway 16, it's now named Upper Falling Water Road and follows along Falling Water Creek. 
Throughout the nine miles or so of this falling water scenic route, you'll come upon various points of interest, which you'll want to stop, take a break, and do a little exploring. There is another section of this bicycle trail that starts at Gilbert on Highway 333 in the Buffalo National River Valley and follows along County Roads 29, 82, and 31 into Marion County. And so, if you include the Falling Water Scenic section, that gives you about 40 miles worth of Ozark Mountain bicycling adventure. It's been floated by American Indians, European explorers, hunters, and trappers. The waters around Arkansas Post, and the best time of the year to come float these waters in the summertime, when all the lily pads and water lilies are out. Who knows, you may even see a gator or two. Officially designated as an Arkansas water trail, the Arkansas Post Water Trail is located in the Mississippi Delta region south of Gillette off Highway 169 at Arkansas Post National Memorial. Not only is Arkansas Post rich in more than 300 years of history, it's also a wildlife sanctuary harboring a wide variety of animal and plant species, making it a true national treasure. The reason why I thought this would be a nice area for a water trail is we have such a history, uh, state history here, uh, dating back from the Native Americans who uh, lived in the area, our early explorers who first established the uh, Arkansas Post. Uh, we also had a Revolutionary War battle here in 1783, uh, major, I consider a major Civil War battle here that I, uh, that uh, is, was involved with the Vicksburg campaign. So uh, along with the beauty and, and uh, the natural beauty here, I thought uh, it would help attract people to come here and visit this area. Yeah, I mean, it's just breathtaking to see the, at this time of the year with all these uh, water lilies out here and the lily pads. It's, uh, and, and not to mention, you know, the, the, the bird species right. that are out here. Right. We do have an active bald eagle's nest here uh, that's been active for, I think, at least 15 years or longer. And, uh, 
We have, uh, we're fortunate in this area of the state. We have uh, not only the Army Corps of Engineers and the National Park Service, we have the US, U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service in the White River National Wildlife Reg Refuge, along with the uh, Trust and Holder Wildlife Management Area. So I think this is it's quite, a, quite a nice place in the state. The put-in point for the water trail is at a boat ramp located near Moore Bayou, which is actually before you enter the park itself. The entire route is about five miles, and if you come during the summer, what you'll experience along the entire way are giant yellow lotus flowers, also known as yankopin, along with the bluish-purple blooms of water hyacinth, an invasive plant originally from South America. It's also interesting to note that during the 1800s, naturalists Thomas Nuttall and John James Audubon visited this area and documented what they saw. Alligator researcher Jeff Smith, who has spent quite a bit of time in this area, shared with us his findings. I've been looking at population density, so, so that's how many alligators can stay within a given area. Uh, for, for a site like, like here at, at Moore's Bio, and how that can be affected by different habitat types. And one of the things that I found that's most important is uh, proximity to a large river like the Arkansas River. This is one of the best sites in Arkansas for alligator populations of the mall is it's the second highest density and it's the highest density of a public site which is important because another thing that i found there seems to be fewer alligators in publicly owned bodies of water and we think we have some evidence for this it's because they're being harassed by, by humans and it makes them leave or it can also lower their reproductive success we haven't been able to prove that yet but as my research continues that's one of the things that i'm going to look at to better protect the alligators that we have what do you enjoy, like coming out here uh, and, and just, uh, you know, I mean, it's, it's gorgeous out here, it's, even if you don't see a gator. Yeah, it's, it's a beautiful place. It's a good place to uh, be by yourself. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you, you can fish, and even if you don't see a gator, they're here. And it's kind of like boating around with dinosaurs. <laughs> That's a good way of putting it. In previous episodes, we featured all the snorkeling opportunities at DeGray Lake and at Lake Washita. Well, add one more, the Cossatot River. And this may be the best location of all because of the superb water quality. During the summer months, when the Cossatot River is not raging, you'll find crystal clear deep pools for your exploring pleasure. Your snorkeling adventure begins with the Cossatot River State Park Natural Area located in southwest Arkansas off Highway 278 east of Wicks. Here, one of the park interpreters will outfit you with snorkeling equipment and some basic instruction. Like that. Yep, and then put your face in the water to make sure it doesn't leak, and you can breathe, and then roll out on your tummy and head out. Well, first off, they get to actually see underwater and breathe and go along and see all the different geological rock structures. And some of them are pretty cool. You have washed out seats or there might be a little opening like a cave. And, uh, 
And there's five different uh, access points along the river, actually, here that you take them to. Yes, sir. I, I take them to Sandbar, mm -hmm. which is about a mile from the falls. Mm -hmm. And then here, the Low Water Bridge, uh, sometimes Ed Banks, and then 246, the day use only area. So now, they can see what sort of fish, usually? Well, we have a lot of red horse or sucker fish. He's uh, and uh, bass, small, large, rock bass, catfish, gar, uh, your sun perch, and log perch, and zebra. Well, that's part of the log perch, but uh, and there are a there's couple of uh, unique ones. Yes, the mountain shiner is all through the river. That the Washita mountain Washita. shiner is called. Yes, and then the leopard darter, which is probably two miles below the falls. You start seeing them there, but they're more at the low water bridge area and on down. They have to have a special habitat, so they're pretty cool. They're about three inches long. It's kind of neat, you know, especially like uh, on this outing, this particular day, uh, uh, all the kids, a first time snorkeling experience, it's, it's an adventure. Yes, it is, especially to tell them that they can breathe underwater and they're looking at me like, no, I can't. And you're like, yeah, you can, just listen and try what I say. And then they do and then it's, they're all excited and then I get excited. Of course, I end up popping my head up to count heads so I don't lose anybody, <laughs> make sure they're okay, but yeah, it's awesome. Yeah. It was fun. Was it all that you expected it would be, or even more? Even more. Well, what's the neat, what's the neat part about it? You know, tell us about kind of what, what's so cool about it. You actually have a chance to breathe through your mouth the mask are on you and you can actually see under the water. You can do that now anyway, but still. <laughs> it helps with the mask instead of just trying to open your, <laughs> just your eyes. Yeah. Well, what did you see? Some fish? I seen some fish. I seen how the rocks looked like they were formed just for you to sit down on. <laughs> seen some really cool rocks. I thought it was a pretty good experience because I've never got to see the water like that. I thought, I think that I'm going to go and buy me one. Really? And, yeah. And start looking around because I thought that was pretty cool. It is pretty cool. It gives you a whole different perspective well, of what's yeah, underneath. I, I've never seen it like that. I've been in the water my whole life and I've always just seen it blurry when I went under. And it It's just pretty cool seeing it clear for once. And, and then being able to breathe and being able to keep going, keep watching it, that was pretty cool too. Opens up a whole different world. Yeah, it does. I, I seen a whole bunch of fish under yeah. there. I got to see them eat and, and it was, it was, <laughs> pretty I, cool. I liked it. The snorkeling experience here is unique because of the diversity, both below and above water. Yes, it's its own little river corridor, and in, in each access point, it's something different. The rocks are different a little bit, just the way they're positioned, and just different things to explore. I mean, I keep finding new things every time I go to different sections. Along with snorkeling, park interpreters offer many other activities along the Cossetot. We can schedule a day just for them and their group, and we can go snorkeling, hiking, uh, depending on what time of year, kayaking. Uh, my kayak instructor for level one, so I can teach them the basics and get them into that. And uh, most everything's free except for the kayaking. If we do Dutch oven cooking workshops, then 
there may be a small fee there, but uh, if they call us ahead of time and we can schedule it, then we're pretty much their guide for the day. And we can do all kinds of things. And with little kids, we got crafts, and you can handle snakes and turtles. And I mean, there's just all kinds of things. So, I mean, it just, uh, if you call and then get a feel of what you're looking for, what your interests are in, then I can suggest more programs and activities. We have quite a few, but I uh, can't remember them all. And what's the website? So, website is www.arkansasstateparks.com. And then you can go to Park Finder and hit Costot River State Park and go to our site and check it out. So check out all the snorkeling opportunities for yourself here on the Cossatot River in southwest Arkansas. And for more on this destination, plus many of our others, or to order a copy of an episode, visit our website, aetn.org slash exploring Arkansas. And we'll see you again the next time for another exciting adventure on Exploring Arkansas.